so we're going on an adventure today to the storage room what? what's this? Proprietary boards, all of them. Ooh. Well, shit. Well, hello there. So, today we're gonna take a look at the Power Macintosh. G3 which huh what is this color is this beige did Apple really make beige machines and it is a desktop huh weird right well there was a period in time when Steve Jobs wasn't uh, working at Apple and they made trash like this well this isn't exactly trash it's just borderline trash. So, um, in the 90s, uh, Steve Jobs left Apple and went on to create his own computer company called Next. And, well, that, uh, that actually, they did create some great stuff, including Next Step, the operating system, which a lot of people still use uh, now it's called Mac OS 10 or Mac OS sorry uh, and yeah in that period when Steve Jobs wasn't at Apple they kinda really fucked every single product lineup uh, they made th they segmented the product lines a lot. They made 30 versions of every single product. They made stupid stuff like the Molar Mac, which is a version of the G3. Uh, they made well. They almost went full bankrupt until Jobs came back. And this is one of the last machines uh, that was produced before Jobs came back. Uh, I don't know. Let's get on with the thing. So let's take let's take a look at the outside of the machine. So starting with the left, we have a lovely Power Macintosh G3 logo and the Rainbow Apple, which is diamond cut. Yes, I kid you not. They diamond cut their logos. Uh, we have we would have sorry a power button down here if it was present. I think it fell inside the machine a long time ago. Uh, it might be around there somewhere. We have a speaker, we have a power LED, we have an expansion bay right here which is yellowing. It seems to be the only part of the computer that's yellowing. The rest of the computer is, is rather sad looking anyway, but we have a, I believe, four times CD-ROM drive, which is tray loading. Nice. We have a floppy drive. Yeah. Apple computers also had floppy drives at some point. This is a 1.44 megabyte or 1.2 megabyte. This is called a super drive by Apple. Pretty much means it can do uh, PC and Apple speeds. Uh, in case you didn't notice the, in case you didn't know, sorry, mm -hmm. the main difference between uh, PC floppy drives and Apple floppy drives was the rotational speed. I do not remember. Um, yeah, and of course my neighbors have decided to start using uh, power tools right now when I'm recording the video, so I'm sorry for that noise, but it's either noisy video or no light. So, great. Uh, yeah, so we have a floppy drive, and that supports pretty much all Mac formats, all PC formats, everything. Oh, and we also have a little eject button for the CD-ROM. Let's turn the machine around and look at the boards, which are horrible. 
you really gotta thank my neighbors for, for deciding to make noise just at the precise time when I have to make a video. And yes, I am very upset about it. Uh, so let's take a look at the ports, shall we? Right there, we have Kensington lock, we have some sort of Apple proprietary lock thing, we have a parallel, sorry, no, this is not a parallel port. Did you expect Apple to use standard ports? Nope, it is not. This is a SCSI port, which is completely out of spec. Uh, the DB25 connector is not rated to do the transfer spe speeds that this SCSI connector does. So, Apple. Uh, ADB connector, which is how you are supposed to connect your keyboard and mouse. You connect them to the same port. There's ports in the keyboard to plug in your mouse. We have 10 base T Ethernet, so that's twisted pair. I do believe this was one of the first Macintosh computers to have, um, let alone a standard port, uh, but Ethernet. Like, it, it had Ethernet and the it, it, I think it's the only standard port in the entire machine, apart from the IEC power leads, which we're going to see next. So we have IEC power input, IEC power output. Then we have a couple serial ports right here. This one is for your printer, this one is for your modem. I do, not, I do think uh, they use uh, RS-422 signaling, not sure about that. Uh, I believe one of them is called a, an Apple Talk uh, connector, and that's the modem one, which I think also does networking or something. I'm not versed into into this uh, whole Apple stuff. Uh, for some reason, my exposure compensation went down. Uh, we have a monitor port. This is a, a DB15. Uh, RGB uh, monitor port, which supports PAL and NTSC composite video, it supports RGB uh, sync video, it supports uh, black and white video, it supports uh, RGB HV, so that's regular VGA as we know it in the PC world uh, video. You do need an adapter, which I made one, I don't know where it is, so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna need to make another one, but okay. Uh, then we have this. This is a slot right here. Uh, these ports go to something called the personality card, and this one is the uh, Whisper personality card. So this one only has audio built in, so that's a line output and a microphone input. That's all it has. It also has a port, uh, sorry, a slot for modem. Uh, there was there was also a personality card uh, for this machine called the Wings personality card. That one had video inputs and outputs. Uh, then we have three expansion slots, which are standard. Unbelievably, they are standard. Uh, they actually are uh, PCI slots, which are which is pretty impressive for an Apple machine. And then we have the specs of the machine, right there. Let me go hand handheld here for a moment and try to focus. There we go. It's a G3 266 meg. It has been overclocked to 300, 512k of cache. Oh, it is a 24x CD-ROM drive. My bad. 4 GB hard drive has been upgraded. Uh, I do believe it has a 20 gig now and 32 megs of RAM, which has been upgraded to the max, which is uh, 768 megabytes of RAM. Yeah, let's open it up, shall we? So, to open the machine up. You actually, what you do is, this one's missing uh, all the feet, so it's easy to turn around. You actually push two little uh, push thingies, little push buttons, under here, and you slide it forward, which is going to be the hard part. 
and there went the power button, how nice. Uh, you slide the case forward a bit, like so, and then it just comes off. And nope, they have not stopped using the power tools, but uh, we'll have to deal with that. Because again, it's either that or no lighting at all. So, in the front of the machine, we can see the aforementioned uh, CD-ROM drive. Oh, there's the power button. I do believe it's completely broken. It doesn't... Yeah, it has a little peg that goes inside the machine. Which, yeah, let's say that that is a bit broken. Uh, it was broken before. I, it, it didn't break when I took it out right now. I'll try to fix it. It's not like it matters much because, well, the keyboard has a power button built in. There goes that. Uh, we have the floppy drive right here. Then we have two expansion be expansion whoa, two expansion bays. Uh, these are three and a half inch. You do need trays for them. Uh, they slide into the computer from the front, and then you connect the cables right here. Uh, fun fact: this is uh, an IDE cable which is supposed to go here, and it's connected as a slave for the so this is the master this is the slave the CD-ROM drive fun fact is this machine does not support booting from slave drives at least the first revisions didn't I don't know what version I have here but I mean if it's connected as a slave maybe the thing can boot from it then down here we have a uh, a hard drive uh, slot for well a hard drive now, one neat thing this computer does for expansion, which I find, well, really neat, is you see this thing right here? Well, you flip it like that. I do believe it has an Apple logo in, like, somewhere. Uh, but, well, you flip it like this. And then, what you do to upgrade the machine is the following. You get this, do that. And open this up. How nifty is that? And then, just in case uh, it wants to close on you, you have this little uh, hood prop thing, which this one is the one that has an Apple logo. I remembered that wrong. Look at that. Uh, so this actually goes into a little slot down here. And it just has this little tab and it props the computer up sorry the the little hood thing up I can't seem to get it hooked on but hey when it works it works um, I do believe it's because it's this thing's not level or something or maybe it has expanded with time or maybe the hinge is bad anyway let's go handheld let's take you off the tripod real quick like so and I didn't show you the power supply power supply is a delta so it's not gonna fail you know it's not gonna fail it's a delta right there very nice uh, it uses ATX uh, a power, ATX power connector funnily enough so these are the guts of the machine. We have our IDE cable, which goes up to the CD-ROM drive. Another IDE cable, which goes to the hard drive. Audio cable from the CD-ROM. We have our PowerPC G3 CPU, and they're there in a SIF socket. This is the cache. Uh, sorry, this is the cache, which is sticking out from the module. It's not just a chip, it's like an entire module. You can slot a G4 CPU in this. Uh, we have the main chipset. We have an LSI SCSI controller right there. Um, we have our floppy cable here. This is the floppy cable. It carries both power and data, which is weird for uh, those of us who are 
you know, used to PCs. We have three standard PC66 SD RAM slots, which again maxed out. Uh, it has three modules of 256 megabytes of memory, which makes for a total of 768. Uh, down here, let's see, we have a level 1 uh, Ethernet controller. This camera is very temperamental <laughs> with the focusing, whole focusing thing. Then we have the voltage regulation for the CPU, I guess. It is really far from the CPU, but alright. Let's take it out, Let's take a look at it. There we go. It's just some caps and a couple FETs, a couple MOSFETs right there. Not really that exciting at all. Go on, focus. Well, there we go. Uh, hold on, an, an inductor right there. It's not like you need more, much more for regulating voltages. Uh, then we have this right here which is not a dim slot for memory. This it's actually hard to take out because it is designed to be hard to take out. I, I mainly want to take out because this is the way I can tell uh, what... Sorry, no, I, there's another way. Well, yeah, let's not make uh, jokes about some Sonic character right now. Uh, that right there is the ROM, so that contains uh, the the boot code and open firmware and all that. And yes, it is ROM. It is not upgradable because, well, flash memory was expensive back in the day. So that's why it, why it is socketed. You're supposed to change it in case you need to upgrade it. Then we have the graphics chipset right there, which is an ATI 3D Rage Pro. Uh, it says Pro Turbo. The Turbo really doesn't mean anything. It it's just a rebrand of the uh, the 3D Rage, uh, which had some tweaked uh, drivers on Windows for synthetic benchmarks so yeah uh, um, graphics card manufacturers have always been doing the same shit that right there is the video RAM I do believe this has 2 megabytes of SG RAM you can put another 4 megabytes on this slot to upgrade the video RAM up to 6 megs of course this is the personality card what you have right here is just your audio chipset pretty much and the rest is just empty the backside is completely empty of course but yeah the you have the audio chipset and that's all really uh, also this connector I didn't know what this connector was for turns out this is for the all-in-one uh, for the all-in-one Power Mac G3 also known as the Molar Mac uh, this carries video from the onboard video card, it carries audio to the speakers, it carries control signals for the monitor, all that. Then we have that, uh, this expansion card thing, which really looks like an MCA slot, it is not an MCA slot, but yeah, that's for the modem. Then, let's take a little look at this we have the impressive amount of three whole PCI slots yeah really three PCI slots and this was supposed to be the top of line workstation from Apple three PCI slots I don't know these uh, PCI slots are probably gonna be all uh, filled up in no time because well I brought this thing home with intention of actually upgrading it and doing something like this is supposedly the start of a video series I don't know if I'll be able to do it it all depends on uh, a CPU 
that I'm going to buy. It is advertised as scrap, like your typical for gold scrap uh, thing, but it is the only Sif uh, G4 I can find, so I'm gonna place a bet on that and hopefully it works. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna put a G4 in this thing. I'm gonna put a PCI graphics card, an FX5500, which is as far as I know, the fastest card you can put in one of these. Most people think it is the Radeon 9200 PCI. And that's true to an extent. So if you only have a G3 CPU, uh, if you put an, a GeForce FX into this machine, as soon as you start uh, doing uh, anything with OpenGL, the driver code needs a G4 for that and it will just conk out, it will just kernel panic on you so you can only use a 9200, a Radeon 9200 uh, with a G3 installed. I'll try to upgrade it to a G4 and if I get to upgrade it to a G4 I'll just get a PCI FX5500 which is a piece of crap of a card even by uh, when it came out standards but compared to the Rage 3D Rage that's in there, yeah. Uh, I'm also hopefully gonna put uh, either 10100 or just gigabit ethernet in it and a, a USB card because it doesn't have USB, I don't know if you have noticed. Let's get, let's uh, go on with the tour again. So, uh, again, PCI slots. There was a prototype uh, of the Parmac G3, which had six PCI slots. I don't know what you'd need six PCI slots for, but it would have been certainly better than three, because, well, I'm gonna run out. I'm gonna run out of uh, PCI slots with just, just with three upgrades, upgrades uh, slots. I think the first GeForce only had three uh, PCI slots, two, don't quote me on that. Uh, well, that's the AGP G4s. Uh, the PCI G4s had four of them, one of them being uh, 66 megahertz for the graphics card. But you had four, and you in the AGP ones, the three PCI slots. Well, if you wanted to upgrade the graphics card, you had the AGP. I do have one of those G4s, but it's not like I can turn it around because it is there, buried and under lots of stuff. That's a gigabit Ethernet G4, by the way. If it were a Jikes, uh, <laughs> well, you know I would have ripped out the CPU from it and put it here. Motherboard. We have a set of jumpers right there with warranty void if seal removed. The seal has been removed. Oh, sorry, broken. I haven't broken it. Maybe a little bit right there. But yeah. Uh, those are what configure the both the bus speed for the motherboard and the multiplier for the CPU. Then we have our PRAM battery right here. Sorry, I, I do believe it is called NVRAM. I'm not sure if this one's good or not. I do believe it was good last time I used the machine. Uh, but last time I used the machine was like a year ago or so. We have headers for the whole system. For some reason I have unplugged the power LED? Why have I unplugged the power LED? Well that I have no clue, but hey, there it is. Plug it in. Fun fact, uh, this actually also has a hard drive LED uh, connection in it, this header. But it isn't connected to anything. Then we have our power button right there, and we have our speaker right here. It's, yeah, built in speaker. Huh. Then we have the hard drive. This is not the original hard drive, I do have the original hard drive somewhere well kept because this machine actually came with some weird full length. Uh, PCI capture editing non-linear analog video thingy stuff. Um, Media 100 maybe was the company that made it. I'm not sure, but this thing, in this machine came with uh, macOS 8.6, I believe, 
and it came with the drivers and all that and I can't find them I just can't find the drivers anywhere else if you want them do let me know I will plug in the hard drive into this thing and get them out I'll have I'll probably uh, upload them in a stuff it expander uh, a stuff it expander file um, but yeah I have this hard drive now which has replaced the original uh, what was it 2 gig hard drive take a look at that 4 gig hard drive yeah so I have this Fujitsu hard drive which I do believe is 10 gigabytes and this guy as far as I know I think has uh, Mac OS 9.2 in it like, like the last version of it which is the only one that will support uh, the PCI uh, USB cards because I do not have an ADB mouse I do have an ADB keyboard but not an ADB mouse uh, so yeah that's uh, that and I think it also has Mac OS 10 beta like Rhapsody Project Rhapsody I do believe I have that one and maybe Mac OS 10.2 and 10.1 I think don't quote me on it, I'll turn the machine on in a bit, I'll have to make the whole <laughs> adapter, the whole VGA adapter thing just to boot it up and see what it's up to, but yeah, uh, I do believe I have those installed in that drive. I'll be upgrading uh, the hard drive when I put the G4, if I do it, uh, and yeah, well, up here in the little hood thing you have the uh, the exhaust fan which is a 92 millimeter very quiet fan and I do believe it is the only fan in the entire machine and I think I'm right by saying that yep uh, as I was saying you can actually this motherboard for some weird Apple decision actually has a standard ATX connector uh, I do believe this power supply doesn't have a standard ATX pinout, but there's a jumper somewhere down here that lets you connect an ATX power supply to this motherboard. I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. It also seems like we have a little unsoldered slot right there for some case upgrade for the CPU. Oh, and this right here under the floppy drive connector is a PC floppy drive connector. And I do believe some people have actually soldered a PC floppy drive connector into that, and it works. So, yeah, I'll be throwing some cards in this right now, and I'll try to boot it, and hopefully that'll be another video. So, yeah, thanks for watching.